today we're talking about a very interesting topic, another very interesting topic, um, relationships, right? Not just relationships, but healthy relationships. Mm-hmm. And then, then we added another word in there, the new healthy relationships. relationships. <laughs> okay? That's a so, mouthful so, right there. That's a mouthful. So that's saying that this, something in the old days was healthy too. Relationship and then healthy relationship. Let's let's talk a relationship first, okay? In, in the context of today, in the context of this uh, of this episode, relationship. Tim, you like your itching? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, relationship. That can be. I'm trying to figure out how I want to uh, word it, but that can be. being a protector and provider and now the new school way is um, that women and men come together and collaborate on all of the duties um, within the household so the the new school way is definitely different um, definitely different definitely some changes there so yeah cool cool I love your thoughts and I'm so I'm curious though so some of those when we say new healthy um New and healthy, right? Mm-hmm. I still feel as though it had to be things in, went in the old way that was healthy, too. So are any of those old uh, ways of doing things, right, in relationships that were healthy, 
Are we bringing any of those over just from kind of um, just from what you all are seeing, right, mm-hmm. with relationships? Are any of those old healthy habits, old healthy ways of doing things coming over into the new way? Or is everything totally different? I think having the man as a protector and provider is still uh, evident in these new type of relationship. Mm-hmm. Um but it's just structured a little bit differently. Mm. So it's okay. still like men are supposed to you know, go to work and come home and still provide for the family. So they're not saying that, like, the new way isn't, oh, well, the man's just supposed to sit at home and now the women go take care of everything. No, they post, they still have their own responsibilities, too. It's just more of saying women have more of uh, opportunity, I think, mm-hmm. and women are, have more... Um, responsibilities as well as in how the family is run. It's not just, oh, you do this and I do this. That's what I think when we say the new versus the old, but it's still some old things in mm-hmm. there. Uh-huh. I really think it's case by case. Um, I feel like some individuals, they value those traditional gender roles um, and they want to figure out what worked well with those traditional work, uh, roles and implement it into their new school relationship mm, uh-huh. um, in a better way. And then on the opposite end, some people view those traditional roles as, you know, that didn't work for, um, that didn't work out how they thought it will work out. So we don't even want to implement gender roles at all. We want to um, be a partnership and, you know, collaborate with with um, those different gender roles. So I think it's a case-by-case situation, um, most definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just interesting to me because I, I would hate to see some of... Um, I would hate to see us miss out on some of the things that um, the old school, I call them, enjoyed, mm-hmm. right? Because they carried their relationship in a yeah. certain way. I think it's all about... And I say this all the time: communication. Okay. If you want to know what the old school did, go talk to the old school and ask some questions. I mean, they they're gonna probably talk to you because I don't know about you, but a lot of the you know older 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 individuals I've met, they love to talk, mm-hmm. and they especially oh, yeah. they, they love to talk about <laughs> what they done did throughout their life. So just, just go talk to them about it, mm-hmm. and then you can put into play what works and does not work in your own relationship. That goes to communication mm. into your own relationship mm-hmm. to be able to say, like, hey, what are these different things that we want to implement and do not want to implement? And I think those conversations need to be held early before right. you even get into a relationship with someone instead of later when you be like, oh, yeah, this ain't going to work out. Well, if you mm-hmm. kind of had a conversation earlier, then you would have known that already. All right. Mm-hmm. I think um, one major thing uh, one one major thing that plays a role excuse me yeah. is being authentic so when you're in the dating field it's this um it's a field out there now man <laughs> world war <laughs> three <laughs> or something <laughs> but um they when you're when you're in when you're dating you have to one be intentional but also be authentic you aren't trying to show somebody the most perfect version of yourself um, you're trying to show someone the most authentic version mm. of yourself. I so that. I feel like the new school way of dating, um, sometimes we'll, we have allowed social media to influence us just a little too Ooh. much. Um, you know, we're still humans outside of social media. I'm still a woman outside of social media. You all are still men outside of social media. Um, so I feel like we have just allowed social media to influence us a little too much. Mm-hmm. And this is why we create these platforms to have real and authentic conversations. But it's starts within yourself you can't be out here dating um and expecting a high value man and you are not um up to par you know you're not carrying or you're not willing to learn the responsibilities that a high value man per se um needs you to to function so it's already unequally yoked um and i feel that that unbalance is what creates so much tension Mm -hmm. between relationships if we can just like you said communicate and go back to the foundations um get back to those foundational things uh trust is very big communication having mutual interest um these are all so important to a healthy relationship plus more i'm gonna say this Say it. To say. So, our right, healthy relationship, like you said, the foundation, guess where that foundation begins? Friendship. Mm, that's number one. That's number one. All right. So, if we cannot be friends or we do not develop a friendship, how can we be in a relationship? Mm. 
Mm-hmm. I cannot relate to you if you're not my friend. Mm-hmm. Or I can't have relations with you if you're not my friend. That's different. That's different. I can have relations with someone, with it, just anyone. Mm-hmm. But as someone that I relate to, I consider a friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say friendship is like the basis for it's it. It's the foundation. It is. And you know if you have a solid foundation, if, if things get hard and rough, that person is just so easy to leave and, and be like, you know what, I'm just done, I'm over it. Y'all mm-hmm. probably weren't friends to begin with. Right. But someone who truly cares about you and cares about whatever y'all have going on, mm-hmm. they will sit and have a discussion with you and communicate what's going on. Mm-hmm. And that's how you work through, even if y'all don't agree on it, even if y'all decide that, you know what, these things are, not, this is not going to work for us. Mm-hmm. Y'all can be friends enough and be um be friends enough in order to make that have that conversation mm-hmm. instead of just saying, you know what, I'm out. I think respect is so big. Mm. Respect is so big in relationships. Um, I think that's one of the other foundational things that we, it's just mandatory. You have to have a certain level of respect for the person you date. Um, in exchange, you have to expect that person to provide a level of respect for you and you have to give um that same level of respect if not more so i really think respect is so big um alongside with communication Mm -hmm. we can communicate all day but if it's toxic Mm -hmm. if it's ineffective if we're yelling at each other that's not good communication um and it's only going to um you know cause your relationship to to go you know negative or become become toxic Yep. So, respect yep. is so important. Yeah, I think I'm think too, man. People out there, please be careful who you're listening to um, when it comes to <laughs> relationships. Mm-hmm. Man, this I was on Instagram the other day, and I try I try to follow things that um, don't interfere with my journey, right? That that um, don't interfere with my growth. So with certain um, certain people that I wouldn't follow, certain pages on on uh instagram and stuff like that that i wouldn't follow but every now and then some of mm-hmm. i'm gonna pop up and uh what's really trendy right now is relationship advice or um or what have you and you really gotta be careful on social media i think you were mentioning that hannah because a lot of the a lot of the points the ideas is brought up is not rooted in the right things right you know it's not that people not valuing the right things right so those values that y'all brought up like respect um, that's important to your relationship. A lot of people lead with the conversation of money. A lot of people lead lead uh, the relationship conversation with just all these things, right? That have nothing to do with really getting to know this person, mm-hmm. right? And so you and so you end up um, chasing something or looking for something in somebody that could be superficial, right? Mm-hmm. Something that mm-hmm. something that can easily fade away. And not those things that make someone authentic, like mm-hmm. you, like you were saying. So y'all just be careful out there, please, um, in dating as well as just in, in, um, you know, in in who you're listening to. It's funny because you know, I'm, my, my fiance and I, we went and, um, uh, you, you know, you would think that talking to older folks, sometimes people are kind of apprehensive about that because you think mm-hmm. older folks might tell you, man, you need to. The man just need to do everything, and the woman just need to change diapers or something like that. And we talked to uh, an elderly person in our church, and and they were we sat down and talked to them. They were really like all all the things that y'all just spoke to about new healthy relationships. It was I feel as though the things that really matter don't really change from old to new, mm-hmm. right? Those things that really matter, like being there for each other, like communication. Um, it's it's more so. Um, just some of those roles that I think we put on ourselves so that uh, I think in the past, the reason for some of it was to, um, was to, I guess, just kind of, um, I don't want to say for, I, th- I think it was just rooted in people's, people's beliefs at the time, right? Mm-hmm. About what a man should, should be, about what a man should do, what a woman should be, what a man should, what a woman should do. And a lot of it goes, does go, does go to, um, there is value, right, that a woman brings to the table. There's value that a man inherently mm-hmm. brings to the table, certain value. And um, so I think that that was just a, I think in the past it was just a big effort to, like, reinforce that, right? But um, I think going back to what I was saying earlier is just being careful about who you're listening to. Because um, you can get some bad advice out here. You can yeah. get some... Get some really good advice, man. Um, 
You get some really good advice. Then, so. I think another strategy to building um, a healthy relationship is listening, one, but also understanding someone's strengths and weaknesses. Okay. Regardless of one's gender, um, each individual has their own set of strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, my strength could not be cooking. It happens to be FYI, but, you know. I'm it- a meal. <laughs> just throwing you can bake, though, you can bake, though right? Yeah, a little bit of everything. But say if I wasn't able to cook, you know, that's not my strength. Um, However, I may be the breadwinner. I may be able to afford um, eating out or ready-made meals, um, some type of alternative. Do what works for you and your relationship, but do it in a healthy way. You know, um, arguing over simple things is how, like, that snowball effect happens. It starts so small, and then it becomes something so big when it could have just been nipped, you know, right up front. So I feel like listening to each other um, is so important, um, but also just understanding someone's weaknesses and strengths and helping those strengths become better, but helping um, increase those weaknesses to become strengths as well. Yeah. Another thing I think is important in a relationship is self-awareness. Okay. And I will tell you what I mean by that. You need to know how is it that you like to be shown love. So mm-hmm. I guess they call mm-hmm. that love, love languages, languages, right? So if I like gifts or if I like quality time, I like touch, you know, words of affirmation, these different things, you need to know that so that you can communicate communicate that to your partner so they can start giving you those things. Another part of that is, as a partner, you have to be willing to give that to your Mm -hmm. um, partner, right? Mm -hmm. Even if that's not how you typically show love, maybe that's something you could try doing or that's something y'all can have a conversation with. Me, I might not be used to showing people uh, love through giving them gifts. Mm-hmm. I may be used to giving them uh, words of affirmation, right, reassurance. But if that's not their love language, right. guess what? It's going to have some type of conflict. Mm-hmm. So us having that conversation about, hey, how do you, how do you like to receive love? How do you like to show love? Mm-hmm. Th- and then having that self-awareness about what's going to trigger you so you can communicate that to your partner. Right. That's creating a healthy relationship. So having those that self-awareness of how you like to receive love, how you like to show love, mm-hmm. self-awareness about what triggers you, what doesn't trigger you, how you respond to certain things, that way you can start having conversations about this in your relationship. And I think um, a big thing is understanding why. So why is this your love language? Why do you react certain ways? Um, understanding the why behind in action um, is so important. And I say that because in my personal experience, my love language, one of my love languages is gifts. So I love gifts, um, and, and I don't really always like admitting that because people think it's, like, materialistic. Oh, you just want to be shown, you just want to be spoiled and shown um, love through expensive gifts. No, I want to be heard. So the gift can be so small, like, hey, baby, I, you know, you say you was having a long day. I know you love socks. Here's a pair of fuzzy socks so you can walk around, you know, and, and ease the pain off your feet. I just want to be heard. So why, understanding the why behind certain things is so important. Why is this your love language? Why do you re- respond and react like this? Um, if you really care and love your partner, you want to understand um, that that depth, that depth excuse me, behind um, an individual instead of keeping it surface level. And I feel like social media and just society has caused us to form those superficial bonds, which, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in return, we don't get anything out of. We get arguments. We get toxic behavior. Um, But the deeper we grow, um, we're able to grow with the individual. We're able to understand that why. Yep. And like you said, you just want to feel heard or understood mm-hmm. I think that's also very important because like I said people want to be people want to feel seen they want to feel heard they want to feel understood if you give someone those three things I promise you you will have a happy person it's for them to hear oh I heard you say you like fuzzy socks here are some fuzzy socks oh my god they, they heard they listened to right. me I didn't know they paid attention mm-hmm. to those small things watch the reaction that you get or if you know you say something bothers you and they respond to that in the but I I hear you I understand you and I apologize oh my god so yes you apologize but the thing that they remember is they heard me Mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't get that because growing up they probably didn't feel heard they probably Mm -hmm. didn't feel seen they probably didn't feel understood 
And so that giving them that will give you a lot, will have you like a lot of, uh, will have you a better healthy relationship. Yeah. So the Institute for Family Studies uh, reveals that as of the year 2020, the divorce rate is on a is at a 50 year low. So that almost sounds like some of these. Some of these new uh, ways of looking at relationships is working. Mm, it's now, possible. It's po- possible, or people just digging it out for some reason. Um, at least that's that's what I got from that study. Apparently, from 1950 to 1980, it shot up. <laughs> but I think that was uh, so the voice rate shot up, and I think maybe around that time was also like the women's um, mm. women's rights mm-hmm. uh, movement and things like that. Um, so I think during that time, right. Um, you had it, there had to become an effort for men to say, "Hey, I need to understand women better," mm-hmm. and for women saying, "I need to understand myself better. I need to respect myself. I can be independent. I can have all these things." So it's it's almost like there had to be a point where we had to we had to learn, right? We had yeah, to realization. We had to talk, right? Mm-hmm. And since then, since the eighties, that divorce rate has been coming down. So I, I think we're on the good trend possibly. I I definitely agree. I think we're on a good trend. Um I also believe that there is an agenda out here meant to separate um and meant to set up women against men. Like mm. let's just be realistic here. You, we see on social media all of the memes and backlash about the 50/50 conversations and who should do this and why um and why somebody deserves this type of treatment um compared to their partner. There's a, an agenda to separate um Men, man and women so that women don't value men and men don't value women. That agenda has no place. Um, if you want, you know, healthy relationships, if you want a healthy family, that agenda has no place within, you know, your heart. You have to, we have to, and speaking from my own experience, I have to do a better job of um, understanding the value that men place in my life and also exemplifying um, my value, like helping my brothers out, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and it's, it's not just in romantic relationships. This is in every aspect. So romantic relationships, but also professional relationships, um, every type of relationship. There's always going to be different differences. But how can we come together um, to unite these differences for one common goal or for unity? I'm going to give you all a tip, too, man. Um, I, I, so my uh, my fiance, I know she, she talks to someone of of the opposite gender, so of my gender, right? A guy, you know, um, with somebody close to her, just about, I guess, almost things pertaining to a man, right? Ways mm-hmm. that men think. And I have somebody as well of the opposite gender that um, that I may, um, you know, ask specific things. And that has helped me out a whole lot. Um, I mean, be careful who you're talking to, right? You never know yeah. people's agendas. But that's been really helpful to me, y'all wouldn't believe it. Because there's some things that as a man, I mean, men and women differ. And there's some things mm-hmm. that, you know, I may I may misjudge, right? Um, and, I mean, case in point, it was something really small. And I and it was kind of it's kind of big to me. I was just curious. And my friend, she said, don't ask that girl that. She mm-hmm. said, she said, don't ask that girl that. And she explained why. And I ain't, I ain't saying nothing about it. I'm just just taking it from a woman. Um, You know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm going to take it. And um, I think that can be, that can be important too, but you got to watch who you're talking to, you know, because some men, they got ulterior motives. They might, you know, they might really have something for you deep down and and some women the same, you know, it could be the same deal. Um, So, so, so is it okay to have, Friends of the opposite sex. If I'm if I'm in a committed relationship, um, is it okay to have friends of the opposite sex? Mm, your your uh, your partner need to know them. Your partner need to know them. Know them um, on what level? No, at least so if I am <laughs> so if I am going out, uh, so so it's like this example. If I'm going out to dinner with uh, with a friend of the opposite sex. My partner needs to know them well enough, right, to where there's either no question or if there is a question, then my partner needs to be able to... I, I need to be okay with my partner going with me. From my experience, with, your partner going with you regardless. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to dinner by yourself. That, that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, now, now, it's some, now, it's some instances I feel like where, you know, what, what, if, I, what, what if I knew... Uh, 
What if I had a friend for 10 years before? You know, we go mm-hmm. back to high school, right? Um, that means and, we got a friend for 10 but, years. No, I agree. <laughs> no, no, no I'm with that. I'm with that. But what I'm saying is, you know, there may be, you know, my partner may be okay with me going out with them, maybe not at night, but maybe for lunch, right? Yeah. Maybe you're okay with that. But I think that definitely with new friends, nah, if, yeah. if, it, if it's a new friend like my, like we either need to be going out together or like she at least got to go the first two times, the first few times to get, to get really comfortable. Um, that's a, that's a tricky one. That's a that's tricky one. That's a sticky one, right? situation. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. It's got to be a comfortability. Gotta I would be, hear gotta your opinion. What you got to say? <laughs> Y'all not ready for it. I want to hear it. I think you can and you should have friends of the opposite sex. Okay. Um, I think that if you are secure within your identity um, and in your relationship, um, then you should be able to have friends of the opposite sex. However, However. this is when communication matters the most. Mm -hmm. I can't have a friend of the opposite gender and we going out for drinks um, or, you know, something late night and I'm not communicating that to my partner. And then my partner sees it on social media. Oh, we having a good oh, time, buddy, buddy. Duh. That's good. Nah, that's that's not communication. Mm-hmm. Um, so so but so you saying if, if I communicate it, then I, it's OK. If you I'm, communicate it and you all have a conversation and your partner is OK, you know, is okay, then cool. You know, go out, have a good time with, with your friend of the opposite sex. But if you're trying to hide and be shysty and um, sneak around, there's obvious, that's obviously not a friend. And let's define a friend. A friend is someone that you're not attracted to and that is not attracted to you. Um, they don't have romantic interest in you. Literally, a friend. Yeah. It's a lot of gray area, though. <laughs> that, is very, that was a lot of gray area. And, 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 and I won't count. So, I wouldn't even want to put my partner in that situation, right? It, like, if it's going out late at night, with I ain't, I ain't doing that. Like, I ain't going out with you late at right. night, unless <laughs> unless she unless she coming along mm-hmm. with us. All right, right, right. Boundaries, um, respect. Yeah, yeah, Bound- but, that's, but, that's but I'm not saying it's nothing wrong. Like, it, it's it's what works for your relationship, though. <laughs> Like that's yeah. important. That's where the communication come in. It's like, all if it about works for your relationship, then I'm cool. Yeah. I, if you like it, I love it. But me, I like it's certain stuff I wouldn't want to put my partner mm-hmm. in that situation because I wouldn't want them to put me in that situation right. either. And but but that but talking up front though, that's why that's so important too. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boundaries and communication. Um that's that's the two main things I think. So what does that communication look like? Though? That communication might look like I don't even know why you asked me that to be perfectly honest because I ain't said whether that was, uh, <laughs> it was good or not good. So said, you, no, might wanna, you might want to ask her what that conversation looked like. No, you know what I'm saying. Terrence, what does yeah. co- communication look like? Man? Well, I, I wish I could tell you, dude. I can start. I can my, start. My, I really can't. I can start. I think it requires <laughs> honesty. Honesty. You know if um, because. I, I have three brothers, so I naturally have a lot of guy friends. Um, I love sports. I love cars. I love more of those masculine-related activities. So I have a lot of guy friends, and I also have a lot of friends that are girls. It would be um, a disservice to me if I get into a healthy relationship and my partner is saying, oh, you cannot hang out with any of your guy friends ever again just because we're in a, this relationship. That's that would be, that will be you know, a disservice to me. However, if I'm honest and I communicate, hey, this has been my homeboy for, <laughs> you know, five years. This is how we met. I think that's important, too. Mm-hmm. This is how we met. Um, and, you know, we're about to go to this sports event together and hang out. There has to be some type of agreement between you and your partner. If your partner feels uncomfortable about it, let's understand why. Let's navigate that. But I think it just requires honesty. Yeah. So is it things that you can do, though, to like to ease ease your partner's mind about it? Because they're going to have mm-hmm. that those suspicion. Ins- that, yeah. yeah, and I mean that insecurity, too. Like They're, they're going to have that. And that's yeah. fair for them to have because mm-hmm. they... You know, they, they, they came in having this insecurity. Where, so where does that do? insecurity come from? I don't know. Does it come That's from, what I was about you. to say. Does it come from your past relationships? There and are you projecting go. that those exactly. trust issues? It, it could be just how they look at relationships, too. You All know, right. They might not be necessarily. Where do you learn about relationships? Who, where, what, are the, what is, like, one of the first relationships you see or notice? It's your mother. Or dad or mom and dad, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. we really want to take this back, like, because as a therapist, I've learned this, but so that's kind of difficult. When that's why when you ask me that question, I'm like, 
I can tell you my personal opinion, but the professional opinion kind of they kind of balances yeah. it out. Because like, if that person was the, you said, is it good to have relationships with some of the opposite gender? Well, communication, of course, boundaries, of course. But then if that person doesn't, oh, you can't have that friend. They're trying to control you now. So is that a healthy relationship now that you're trying to control what I'm trying to do? But if we can have a conversation, and let's say you do have a problem with it, and then we start to have a conversation about why you have the problem. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Let's let's really have this conversation. What are you afraid of? Oh, oh, then I just don't know. It's not that you just don't want me to. You have a problem Mm -hmm. for a reason. So let's really get to the bottom of this. That problem could be, well, I feel like you and this person got something going on. Well, why do you feel that way? What have I done? Oh, I feel like, and was, what you're probably still going to get to is, you're going to leave me. Mm-hmm. Abandonment. Abandonment mm-hmm. issues. Now we got a whole other can of worms that we just yep. opened up. So that's why I said, if you really want to know, mm-hmm. we can get down to it. Mm-hmm. But it's more of, I think that person, if that person respects you, like your, your partner, if they respect you, if they trust you, mm-hmm. y'all can have a conversation, y'all can come to an agreement, y'all can come to boundaries, not at night, only for yeah. lunch, I need to know about it, and start to lay out things so that they can feel secure. Mm-hmm. But no matter what you do, if they never feel secure, that's not a healthy relationship, because right. now you're going to be always be on the defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you got to think I about gotcha, that. I gotcha. But also, I feel like it's it's some. So the person though. So let me ask this, Hannah. In your situation, mm-hmm. we got a little time though. We got a little time. We got a little time. Um, so in your situation, like, what is that person like? In your situation, what are you willing to? Are you willing to compromise in a way though? Yeah. In so what way could you? If I'm going out with a guy friend, compare it to if I'm going out with a female friend. If I'm going out with a female friend, we're going to look super cute, you know, might do our makeup. If I'm going out with a guy friend, on the other hand, um, if I want to do my makeup, sure, but I'm not going to add, do the most, you know, do that extra layer of trying to look glamorous and trying to um, look aesthetically pleasing because that might cause some insecurity uh, with my partner. So I'm going to do what I have to do on my end to avoid those insecurities coming out. Um, I think something else we've been talking about communication. If you're out hanging with your um, with a friend of the opposite sex, check in with your partner. You know, check in yeah. with your partner. Don't yeah. let it. Don't let four hours go by don't you and go you're ghost. with your guy friend, and yeah, you not. and you go ghost. Like, don't come go on, ghost. come on, like check in, communicate. Yeah, not. Don't go ghost. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, hey, you ain't never took four hours to, res- <laughs> to respond, but yeah, you with that dude and you took mm-hmm. four hours. We got a problem, right? <laughs> so you about to cry too, Terry. We got a problem. <laughs> this is a sensitive topic. Okay, Tyrese. <laughs> Yeah man, but, yeah, man, it's a, it's a two-way street, man. Um, it's definitely it's, two-way. It's a two-way yeah. street with these relationships. Um, duh, this forgot. has been a fun, fun episode. I like yeah, it. I, I like it. We might need a part two. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's a lot that we can talk about with this one. Gosh, I don't know if they ready. I don't know if we ready. What you mean? Josh, you got something in your mind. You over there yeah, contemplating hard, man. I keep, I keep forgetting. It must don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about it. It did in the moment, but how we looking on time, man? We need to get up out of here. We need to get up out of here. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all got any more thoughts on this? It's great. great I'm, I'm done. I just want to say, don't, don't. Let's not allow society to um, separate men and women. We're to here to support each other. We need each other. Um, the world would not revolve and evolve without women and men cooperating, supporting each other, collaborating together. Um, and that doesn't just have to be in the romantic aspect. It can be in the friendship aspect, in the business aspect. Um, let's learn how to support and collaborate with each other. So I, I know what I was going to say. I was going to say, so be mindful, though. I think you have to be mindful of where your significant other is on their journey though sure mm-hmm. maybe maybe they're maybe they got some insecurities y'all yeah. talk about them right that's really important but then after y'all talk about them you have to be careful not to trigger s- not to trigger and then just go on and do it your way just because y'all didn't talk mm-hmm. about it right just expect them to just change overnight no right. that's going to take some growing for them you got to give them some grace for that um, and I think that's important for us to be mindful of too. Is they they got to continue to grow. One day they may get to that place where you know 
where um you know the insecurity is gone or at least it's more manageable mm -hmm. right but in the beginning there may be things that you have to do if you really care about that person you will do them right right if you really care about them I agree. Um, but those things that you have to do so that they aren't so that they aren't um as triggered mm -hmm. you know um just so their mind is at ease so just being flexible man right being flexible and uh a relationship is 100 percent and 100 percent it's not 50 <laughs> 50 it's 100 and 100 I like um you pour into me i pour into you yeah um if you're feeling down i'm here to lift you up you're feeling down you know it should be reciprocal let's go cool. um and I like what you said where we have to understand what level your partner is at. But you also have to be willing to compromise. Mm -hmm. So many relationships don't work out because it's one-sided. Mm -hmm. And um, one person is unwilling to compromise or the other person, they have relaxed and loose boundaries and they're just going with the flow. Whatever whatever you say, you know, um, that's what it is. Nah, communicate, um, come together, learn how to compromise with each other. And I feel like you just have to be aware of what level um, your partner is on emotionally. Mm. Yeah, emotional intelligence is a big thing. Uh, I guess we can be about to wrap up. But y'all want to speak on that, though? Because I think emotional intelligence is a is a big thing in, in a relationship. Um, y'all want to speak on that? I, I always said that whatever life partner God has for me, um, I would appreciate if they went through therapy. That's a that's a standard for me. Um, oh, wow. Because they have to be self-aware and they have to have some type of... I'm a whole therapist out here. You know, I can't <laughs> be a therapist in my relationship, which I've done before. So my Ooh. standard is, um, you know, whoever God sends my way to become my life partner has to have um, gone through their own thera therapeutic process and discovering who they are as a person and healing from their childhood traumas before we can even grow. So I value um, understanding your partner's emotion emotional intelligence because you can't argue if your emotional intelligence is on 10, you can't argue with somebody or disagree, I say, with somebody who um, emotional, emotional intelligence is on a level um, 5. Can we you know? define it real quick too, emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence, you want to help me out here? Pretty much being aware of what you're feeling. Let's just put it that way. How, how am I doing emotionally? Mm -hmm. And expressing it. And expressing it and communicating it. And can I yeah. pick up on yours? Too? Exactly. Yeah. Can I pick up on yours too? So I feel like that's important when, it's, when you're in a relationship. And like you said, if somebody is on a 10 and somebody's on a 5, that's a, honestly, that's a drastic difference. It is. <laughs> and that's going to mm -hmm. probably cause some conflict. So yeah. I can understand when you said that person needs to go to therapy mm -hmm. or they need to be on some type of journey to where they're trying to yeah, get better. Yeah, at least try. Yeah, and showing that effort that, hey, I am trying. I might not be at a 10 right now, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to get there. And then you can be like, okay, um, again, I'm not your therapist, but I, I like you enough that I'm going to help you get there, mm -hmm. right? So being supportive and lifting them up because yeah. it's like you said, it's 100 and 100% and 100%. And I love the way that you put that. And we all have our strengths and weaknesses. My, my strength may be my emotional intelligence. Your strength may be your physical. Um, you know, you're able to do physical labor. If you really want something to work with um, your significant other, figure out those strengths and weaknesses and figure out how to collaborate together and interact um, with those strengths and weaknesses. Great conversation, y'all. Well, y'all, uh, it's been another great episode of Speaking with Gravity. Speaking we with hope, good old gravity. Yeah, we, we <laughs> hope that no relationships were hurt during the um, during the course of this of this filming, during the course of this video. Feelings might get hurt, uh, but yeah, not no yeah. relationships. So so, so, so so listen, baby, if I spoke out of pocket at all, <laughs> Don't try to apologize I, now. I, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's listen. April. A whole lot of spring cleaning going around. Yeah. Clean up those relationships, y'all. That's right. Before Clean summer, please, because summer it up. get crazy out there. In the summertime, at least it used to. I ain't, yeah. I ain't out there. So I don't know what it is. We, I, I might be in one. You know, after bike week, because that's coming up. We are here for a healthy relationships, that's and it. shout out to Winston, y'all. We got to give a shout out to Winston yeah. um, for the audio and visual recordings. He's so amazing. He's the man that makes this production happen behind the scenes. So shout out to him. And shout that man be working. I ain't even gonna lie. Winston be doing it. Yeah. Um, he he got a lot of responsibilities. He makes mm -hmm. sure you know we're on point with 
you know, Mike Chase were one on point of where we need to be looking. Like he he really pays attention to the small details. He's the homie. And I, I appreciate him for that. Right. Definitely. And so. we appreciate you all for listening too. So mm-hmm. shout out to you all. Thank you. And shout out Thank Kirby. You. Shout out Kirby. Shout out to Kirby. 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 You know he 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 ain't with us this season, you know, but he is with us. He's yeah. always, yeah. yeah he, he behind the scenes. We're going to drag him on here, though. <laughs> We're going to drag him on here one of these episodes. One of these episodes, he'll have to yes, come sir. back for you guys. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all, it's been fun, though. It's been fun. It's been great. Look us up, Speaking With Gravity on all platforms, at Speaking With Gravity. Y'all know I'm at Garvey, the number four press. Yeah, you can find me Hannah Elise two underscores on Instagram. Uh, Instagram Terrence underscore Dolphins. Y'all take care now. <laughs>